Hello out into the world and welcome to Humankind. Today I'm going to explain you how the battle works, what kind of options you have to proceed with it, how you can spawn, how you can use terrain in your advantage and how you can actually win a fight against an opponent who is stronger than you. So have fun with it! So when you get attacked or when you attack somebody, you will get a notification that a new battle has started. You will see that there is a gray area showing you the battle area. You will see that you have some of the tiles in your color and some of the tiles will be in the opponent's color. So in this case, I have three blue tiles that I can spawn on and the opponent has a few more tiles that he can spawn on. So those colors will show you where you can position units from the very start of the battle. So when you fight in the early game you can see that there's only this small area of spawn around your units. It includes the one tile you're standing on, it includes the two tiles next to you towards the enemy if you attack them and it includes the three tiles behind you. The enemy will get the tile he's standing on, the two tiles behind him and then the three tiles behind that. And the battlefield is basically all the tiles around it in a square. Down here there are some mountains which of course restrict the spawning area. The bigger the armies are, the more tiles you will be able to set your army on and the more tiles you will have in the battlefield. In this case, if I click on opening the battle, you can see I have four archers in my army and the opponent has one scout rider in his army. So even he has only one person, I have four, I have much less tiles. And this is because it's not only depending on the size of the army, it's also depending on the territory where the attacker is hitting on the defendee. So you can see now here that this scout rider, he was attacking me downhill into this outpost. By attacking me, he's controlling the two tiles next to him. So this tile up here and this tile up here. That leaves me no room in this direction to expand my spawn area to. Because you can see on the left side, there's a cliff here. So you cannot climb cliff with your units, which is why I cannot spawn from this tile up here. What I will have as my spawn area is behind me. It also depends on the size of your army. So you can see here he has some reinforcements and here you can see which of the armies are in battle, like in this case it's the scout rider, and which of the armies are reinforcements. And those reinforcements are unlocked with a certain technology. So in the beginning of the game you will not be able to join other armies into the fight because you will need organized warfare as your reinforcements technology in order to bring reinforcements in. You can see here that my opponent already has this technology and he has some of his units standing in the battle area already, which is why these reinforcements are already listed. The more people I bring into the battle, the bigger the battle area will already become. In this example, you can see the spawning area got much bigger. And this is basically because much more units are involved into the fight. You can see here that I have four units in the battle. And I also have two reinforcements, which is my two stacks of units that I have right here. A set of spearmen and archers and another regiment with a few other archers. I also have a few other archers up here that I can bring into the battlefield because I have the modern warfare technology. I can actually bring them into the battlefield. So you can see now I have a third regiment that is in my reinforcements that I can bring into the battle. I can also see the opponent, the scout riders and two warriors, but they have quite a lot of reinforcements that I can bring in. Uh, you can see down here there's one regiment, probably one of the scout riders. Up here there's another one of the scout riders. There's a few in the back here that might be dangerous for me because they're attacking me from the back. There's those two here, this regiment. You can see if I click on one of the regiments, it will highlight. So those two, I might be able to prevent from spawning. Another mechanic that I did not explain yet is the support mechanic. So if you have units that are out of range of the battlefield, but that are ranged units that can actually join the battlefield with their range, so for example artillery pieces or in a later game flight units, then you can use them as support units. So they can actually attack the opponents from outside the battlefield into the battlefield 
which is a very interesting mechanic for later in the game. Now, as they attacked me, they are going to attack first. If you want to fight against an opponent, you might want to make it possible that you attack them rather than they you, because then you get the first turn. Now, let's have a look at what we can actually do when we are attacked or when we are fighting a battle. You have basically three options. You can either retreat, this will make your units move away, give you some kind of movement penalty afterwards for the next few turns, and cost you war support if you're in a war. You can also manually battle, which is controlling your armies by yourself, or you can instant resolute and then the computer will battle for yourself. So uh, let's try and see what happens. What is the difference between instant resolution and manual battles? Instant resolve. And you can see that I actually won this battle. This is the result. I was winning. I lost 9 units, which is quite a lot. But the opponent lost much more. They lost 20 units, 13 cavalry and 7 warriors. I gained a lot of money. So even the odds were not in my favor. You can see up here there's this bar which shows you more or less who is the stronger person. I was winning this battle. So now let's see what happens if we do it manually. So you can see here that my side is weaker overall. So the first thing you're going to do when you're manually battling some battle is you're going to position your armies. And you can see I'm kind of boxed in behind these cliffs here. And there's a few units up here that I would want to inspect um, before I position my army. So you can see up here he has two scout riders and a warrior. He has another two scout riders and a warrior. And in the very back that it is another scout rider. So I'm not afraid of any archers uh, shooting me from the top. I can just defend the entries into this piece. And then down here I have quite a lot of scout riders and warriors that are going to attack me and I have this one regiment here of scout riders that I might want to block from joining the battlefield in the very beginning. Now terrain is a very important issue so if I want to position my people I probably want to position them on the hill. Position one of these spearmen up here to prevent any of the scout riders coming down here and attacking me downhill. This is more like a defensive positioning that I'm going to take here. This Praetorian guards are going to stand here on the hill to keep people from attacking me up here. The archer will go to the back. Another Praetorian guard will come down here. Now there is a possibility that it, they attack me from up here so maybe this archer might actually be better back there and then another spearman up here. Now it might also be possible that they attack me from back through the city so up here I would probably also like to have a Torian guard just to defend this hill so let me position him maybe up here to uh, be able to attack him from there now I am missing another melee unit to block this e entry point here so I have a nice row of melee units that are protecting my archers from this main front here what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put this one down here and I'm going to hope that they take too long to get around the city to attack me because this is actually a cliff they should not be able to get down here so I should be safe there I will defend this positioning for now with this melee units and shoot them from the back with the archers so let's end the deployment and see how they deployed their units. You can see they have all this space to deploy their units. They will probably deploy on top of my support units here, but at some point they might become in handy. So let's see how this goes. Another important aspect is that each fight has multiple rounds. So you will have three rounds to play through with your units. And as soon as those three rounds are over, you will need to end your turn in order to continue the fight next turn. And you can see, depending on the size of this fight, this is like a more smaller fight, you will have multiple turns for these kind of fights. I've seen fights up to six turns. So six times three attacks 18 attacks with each of your units so you might encounter very very big fights when you attack you will see that the game tells you how much damage you're going to deal and how much damage you're going to get so on the top you can see the attack prediction you will get bonus strength from attacking from a high ground and you will get bonus strength from standing next to a friendly unit you will get penalty if you're standing on a river while attacking so you can see they are minus three from crossing the river as I'm standing on the river and the same applies if your opponent stands on the river he will also get this penalty. 
Another bonus you are getting is for a rear attack. So you can see here as I'm attacking him from both sides, I'm getting a rear attack which will give me plus four combat strength against this mammoth. And as he's already damaged, he's also receiving a penalty minus on his combat strength. So like this, you can kill those stronger units much easier. So you can see that they actually deployed and they are coming from the back of the city to attack me, but it's only one scout rider. And as they attacked me, they have the possibility to attack me first. But you can see again, he's attacking me into my spearmen. He's attacking downhill here, but I have a nice front up here that I can protect myself from. Now he's actually coming down with those, so I can also deploy my archers uh, next turn as soon as it's my turn. So I have to deal with those two scout riders in the top. I have to deal with this scout rider here in order to block maybe the next reinforcements and with those up here. So what you want to do first is to actually deploy your reinforcements. You can see he was deploying almost all his reinforcements. He has 19 people in the battle right now. I only have 12, but I still have this one reinforcement that I can bring in. So I'm going to do that first and deploy these archers here up on the hill so I can shoot downhill. And I'm going to do that with most of them. I just need to be careful where to position them. I can position one here and then bring in the last one. Because once you moved all your units, you're not going to be able to bring in more reinforcements. So always bring in the reinforcement first and then plan on how to do it. So there are these scout riders here, down here that might come up and attack my archers, but I'm on the hill, so I'm fairly protected. What I can do now from up here is actually shoot down this guy here. I want to maintain this line. It would be better though to have this spot here because this is then just one spot that I can protect this line from rather than having those two. So uh, what I would want to do is as well is kill this guy here. Okay, now I can attack him from uphill and actually kill him. And then I can use this Praetorian Guard to step in here and protect this line from uh, anything else. And what you can also do, other than attack, of course, you also have other possibilities. You can move, of course, uh, and you can also defend. So you can see with uh, well positioning, they are actually killing themselves a little bit against me. They are coming in with more and more units and my units are very well positioned. He is putting a lot of units into this one guy. Where I did not do the best positioning was up here. So you can see now that three scout riders are coming from the back and threatening to kill me from the back. So I definitely need to take care of those first. Now in the south he also attacked one of my archers here. Unfortunately you cannot swap units. Uh, that's something that I would like to, to see in the future because now I'm kind of limited and I will lose this archer here. You can always see the predicted damage. As you can see here, I'm supposed to do 11 to 25 damage and if I attack them, I actually made 24. So this was a very good roll. It's just purely luck based how much damage you will actually do. In this case, it's 19 to 32 damage. He will do 21. He does 22 to 33 damage. It actually got 29. So I was kind of lucky with it. Unfortunately, I was not able to kill any of those. So this archer might be dead. I still have a few units that I can use. What I want to do is kill one of those scout riders with my spearmen even he's going to get very weak with this swap this unit which was defending very very well bring him down and then swap him against with one of these other guys yes okay perfect i was able to kill that one and then i can come up here and kill the next one and now i do not need to worry about any attacks from up here there's just this one warrior in the city that might be able to come out but my spearman is well positioned here you always want to see that you do lose as little units as you can because units can heal but you need to rebuild them if you lose them so rather have a lot of injured units after the battle other than killed one it's looking pretty well for me at the moment i will bring up this unit to deal with this warrior and that should be it we won. So now we can compare the automatic battle with the manual battle and you can see that it was much better for me to actually fight this battle on my own because I only lost two archers. He lost the same 19 units that he would have lost before. This was basically it. 
for for this massive battle so this is how you can fight battles how you can win a battle even you're not as well equipped as the opponent it is quite important that you have strong units like the praetorian guards that are much stronger than these scout riders it's very important that you have archers well positioned from the top to shoot down on the units without even getting any damage and like this you can get ahead of the ai and actually kill a few units and get those nice militaristic stars that everybody is dreaming of so i hope you learned uh, something from this tutorial please smash the like button if you liked it um, please press the subscribe button if you would like to see more of my videos and feel free to leave a comment below if you would like to tell me how you fought your best battles thank you very much bye bye